here on Instagram. Hello to you on Facebook. Tanja here, peak performance specialist for real estate and property professionals. Erin, bam, straight off the bat. How are you, my love? <clears throat> How are you? Good to be here. Joanne, good morning. I feel like I haven't spoken to you forever. Emily, good morning. Uh, Chanel, great to have you here. Kate Ashton, good morning. Brooklyn, it's all the ladies in the house so far. How are you, ladies? Greg, you're doing it for the fellas. Thank you, buddy. Um, awesome. Great. Let me know one word. You know how I like to play one word. Good morning, Christine, to describe how you're feeling right now. One word. Just type it in here on Facebook. Uh, type it here on Instagram. Oh, totally is a good day. Just putting that out there. <laughs> oh, good on you, Erin. And the Caramel Brother. Chanel and the Caramel Brother, I'm curious. Oh, Kate Ashton shifted from, I feel like I'm calling a race. Kate Ashton shifted from Facebook to Instagram. Okay, great. Emily's feeling empowered. Chanel's feeling caramel. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm curious. Where are you from, Chanel? So if I haven't met you before, my name's Tanja. I'm a peak performance specialist, typically for real estate and property professionals that just want to grow themselves, their business, or if you're a leader, your people in the least amount of time. Uh, I work with executive directors and principals and leading agents, just really looking at what are the subconscious beliefs that get in the way of you realizing a life that you love. Although we do have uh, a lot of people join in that aren't from real estate and property. I'm really grateful to have you here no matter where you're from. So rapid five Friday is where I reflect on some of the top coaching themes from the week of my private one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Greg is relaxed. Yes, you're on holidays and still tuning in and avid, avid viewer. Good on you, Greg. <clears throat> How is your holiday going? And uh, so I just reflect on the key coaching themes for the week and I just rapid fire some insights and tips to you. G'day Fran, how are you? So you can grab something and use it yourself. And I do that because I want you to be happy and deeply fulfilled in all of your endeavors and I want you to realize your full potential now. Not in five years time, not when you've got that qualification, not when you've lost four kilos, not when you get that listings but right now. Hey Kellyanne, how are you my love? Just wondering what is one word to describe how you're feeling right now? Right now. All right, so my eldest daughter Kaya has a year 12 exam, so I'm going to shimmy, shimmy, cocoa pop because I don't know why I haven't said that, but uh, because I've got to get her to school on time. I also want to start by doing a quick shout out to Mark Sinclair, uh, the team at Real Estimations. They've decided to come on as a sponsor but for me for Digital Live Ride. So I'm riding 500Ks across Thailand on the 26th of February with nine, uh, 99 other real estate professionals, all to, all to raise funds and awareness for Hands Across the water if you want to know more you can oh if you want to donate even better you can just um go on to my link uh in my bio in in instagram or um there's a post on the facebook page hey fiona knight how are you beautiful and 100 percent of the donations go to kids that don't have parents and have big dreams in their hearts and need education and technology to create a life that they love inspired by you girl thank you kelly oh thank you kellyanne that's beautiful how am i feeling Oh, I'm actually feeling really powerful today. Um, just really in my body, super present, super powerful, ready to serve, ready to have an amazing day. And as a peak performance specialist, let me ask you, how do you start your day? When you wake up, are you automatically within 30 seconds like most other people? Yes, the energy is amazing. Good on you. G'day, Kelly Smith on Instagram. Good morning again, Fiona. Are you like wake up in the morning, you've pressed snoozed a couple of times, you've reached for your phone and 30 seconds in, you're swiping up or down or left or right on Instagram or some other social media platform. If that is you, well, you're just like everybody else, but you might be feeling just like everybody else, which is kind of deflated before you've started. If you're feeling deflated before you've started, I invite you to look at what it this morning to really get yourself in peak state. Nice one, Chanel. Am I saying your name right, Chanel? Is that okay? Water and lemon, beautiful. That's a detoxifier that uh, helps the liver excrete toxins from the rest of the day. Chanel's meditating, beautiful. Uh, great, thanks, Chanel. And thanks for your interaction too. I really love it when people interact. When I wake up in the morning, uh, my feet hit the floor and when my two feet hit the floor, breathe, that's a good start. Hey, Akshay, how are you, Ash? 
and I say thank you. I start with gratitude and that sets me in an, uh, um, an attitude of gratitude which elevates my altitude for the day. <clears throat> so notice, are you reaching for Instagram and scrolling up, down, left or right if you're on Tinder or Bumble or another device? And just know that every single decision that you make, scrolling up or down, is using prime real estate of your mind. The state of your mind when you wake up is prime real estate. It's prime time for innovation, inspiration, uh, effective problem solving. And uh, if we're using it for really poor quality decision makings, like I like that comment on that, don't like him, don't like her, whatever, you're really using that peak time where you know you could be doing something else. Lael Stone's joined. Oh, hello, Miss Stone. I know I sound a little drag queen. Oh, Chanel's giving us palm trees and islands. Little Creatures has joined. Fairy Mary, how are you, my love? These amazing female business owners. Now, speaking of Lael Stone, I'm so excited to be doing a live interview with Lael Stone. So Lael Stone is a birth, sexuality, parenting expert and has also joined the amazing team of the Resilience Project. So if you're not familiar with them, check them out. They're really traveling around Australia and I think potentially internationally as well, unpacking what it looks like to create resilience as, you know, a, a kid, a tween, a teen and even parents. So I've got Lael on as a special guest on Mindset Mastery Monday, Monday coming up on the 18th here in our office on the Mornington Peninsula. And here's what we're going to be talking about. Good morning, Craig. Great to have you here. Perfect. We're having a baby. Chanel, tune in. Is this baby number one? Um, so so Lael, I've asked Lael to come in because I know a lot of my clients that are real estate professionals or entrepreneurs that have kids. Here's one thing that they n navigate. That desire to grow a successful business, to contribute, to change the world, to set the world on fire, to make magic happen, to fulfill your potential, to build a brand, to be of service, right? That part of our persona. And have kids. Yes, we're excited too. Can't wait. Uh, so does that mean, Chanel, that you have two or, or this will be your second? I just want to know. And uh, so we're building this business for those that are, that are parents, right? And then many parents, particularly women, I don't want to generalize, however, I've seen more women experience this, navigating parent guilt. Have you ever felt that for those that do have kids? Second, congratulations. When when are you due, uh, Chanel? When, when's the baby coming? Not twins. Oh, good. Okay, phew. Okay. So do you ever feel, for those that are parents, and I respect there's some people watching and some people that will watch that have fur babies instead or haven't had kids yet, very common to navigate the terrain of parent guilt, feeling bad because you're not at Johnny or Joanne's soccer training or you didn't make their recital or you're not there for bedtime, bath time and there's not enough playtime and you work six days a week. So there you are trying to build a future for your life and others and you're not really present and they're your why the reason you don't have a job the reason you're not like most other Aussies who are earning seven an average of seventy nine thousand dollars per annum the reason you're not part of a couple that is averaging averaging one hundred and one thousand dollars per annum is a you love people B you love property and C you know that this industry is gives you a pathway for financial freedom but it does come at a sacrifice and so I, as your coach, want to support you in realizing your potential and your dreams in your business, but not at the cost of your relationship with your kids, not at the cost of the relationship of your your you know husband or wife or, and yourself. So Lael's going to come on and we're going to talk about how can you build a successful real estate business and not carry parent guilt. Um, yes, so much parent guilt, says Emily. Uh, I really understand. Tough balancing act, it sure is. It's going to be an amazing conversation. Aim into that, says Chanel. Yes, Kate Radcliffe, great to have you here. And Kate Overton, the ladies are definitely winning. So if if you're watching this, men, women, parents, suit to be parents, or you, you really care about someone that does have kids, you want to give them a raft to be able to be successful in business and life, and particularly parenting, because it's the greatest responsibility ever. I certainly firsthand know what it's like to be consumed by work and be the CEO and not the nurturing mama and the impacts of that. I know what it's like to feel guilty. It doesn't serve. So let's let's actually speak with Lael on uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Monday to unpack 
how do you create an amazing business and not suffer from parent guilt? So give me a thumbs up if you like the sound of that content. We're going to be doing a lot more interviews. I am going to be interviewing Mark Sinclair from Real Estimations. These guys uh, recently sponsored me as part of Digital Live Ride. Kate, Kate and Karen in the house. G'day, Karen. Denley, how are you? Beautiful. If you're watching this live, type in live. If you're watching the record, type in the record. Uh, Mark Sinclair is also going to unpack. He's going to come on as a guest. He's going to unpack the top big mistakes that age and leaders in real estate are making that's impacting their bottom line and their profits. Oh, we've got a lot of hell yes from Chanel. Okay, great. <clears throat> so let's get stuck into mindset. Uh, what are we? Rapid Fire Friday. If you got pen and paper handy, get ready to take some notes. Leo, thanks for tuning in and thanks for being part of it. Lance, g'day Lance. Great to have you here. We need a bit more testosterone. There's a lot of ladies in estrogen on, online today. So I have a couple of principles in uh, New Zealand that I coach. They've, been, they've come a long way as far as getting clear about their vision, goals, accountability, measurement and management and one-on-ones with their team. Both of them are slightly behind where they want to be in their sales themselves. However, they're, you know, they're every single week doing the actions they need to do but here's what we uncovered this week they are allocating two hours of prospecting time every single day five days a week sometimes four days a week however I said are you allowed I so I said because their um, productivity was about 56% completion of their prospecting rate, uh, ratio. And I'm like, what's getting in the way? Why aren't you hitting 100% of your calls, connects, appraisals, listings and sales? And they said, oh, interruptions, interruptions. So this is for those of you that are watching that allocate time for prospecting and you get interrupted. Is that you? Fiona saying, really need that right now. Mum of three, looking forward to Monday. Awesome, Fiona. I'm so happy. Please, what, what I'd love by the way you know I show up free you know I'm here to serve I don't ask for anything other share this if you know okay like share this or tag this with for, for people especially Monday's interview because I listen the whole reason I show up and do this is because I want you to be happy and deeply fulfilled now and I know many of you are stressed and struggling and beside yourselves so thank you Fiona and please share this because Monday's going to be a very important conversation Brendan at Commercial Collective how are you my friend week two little creatures live baby good morning sunshine good morning my love I love you <clears throat> so are you putting time aside to do a project do a task write a thing complete something prospect if you're in real estate and are you allowing yourself to get distracted meaning is the ding of the email going off g'day mummy kills uh, g'day Christine is the uh, is your social media notifications going off are you uh, answering personal calls what my coaching to my clients was you have to relate to yourself like a heart surgeon and if you were sur you were doing surgery on somebody's heart Brendan's like hell yes good for you hey Luke good day Luke you're always a, a beam of inspiration tell us Luke what's the best thing that's happened in your week so far just type it in we've got a highly interactive group this morning uh, so the topic we're talking about is interruptions are you allowing yourself to get interrupted one of my favorite quotes g'day <laughs> mama keels uh, is we teach people how to treat us by what we allow, what we stop and what we reinforce. So for these principals who were kept saying, oh, we're only hitting 50% of our prospecting targets each day because we're getting interrupted, it puts them in a disempowered position because they are a victim of circumstance. External things are getting in the way of them completing. But we're the ones that teach people how to treat us by what we allow, allowing the interruptions, what we stop, stopping the interruptions and what we reinforce reinforcing guys this is my prospecting time yes I'm your leader but I'm also the number one revenue earner for the business so I've got to make sure that I wear that hat as well as the leadership hat and these two so what happened was these two principles they allocated their prospecting time but they hadn't communicated it to their team and they weren't being diligent about it Christine totally yes I am thank you for the reminder ah good okay Christine thank you for being honest best thing the business challenges for the long-term benefits or oh, biggest business challenge that you've had today Luke and how you rose above I'd love to hear so your success is in your hands and if you're letting technology social media people your team your cat whatever it is interrupt you completing stuff then uh, it's not going to work and it's just a subconscious way to sabotage you you fulfilling your desires so please put some strategies in place 
put it in your schedule, communicate to your team or your colleagues or, you know, your family that this is uninterrupted time, not because you don't care, but because you do care, because you care about keeping the office open, you care about putting food on the table, you care about their education and well-being. Everything that you're doing, it, you're often, especially for parents, your why is your kids. If you're going to sacrifice time with them, then make it worthwhile. And then we're going to talk about, certainly with Lael next week, the power of presence. And when you are with them rather than wish you were there with uh, the whole day if you're there on your phone they're not going to feel connected but if they feel you're right there and even if it's 10 15 minutes that just will fare well and they'll be overflowing with love which will hopefully sustain them and you for the next day g'day tina harvey how are you my love okay so some of you have written in to say that you allow yourself to get distracted. you got to know you're in charge. Don't be a victim of circumstance. Communicate to people what you're doing. Uh, turn off all distraction and just head down bottom up. Luke is saying difference of opinion, managing through it. I'm thinking kindness and long term. Great. If I can offer you something, Luke, really stand in the other person's shoes and see things from their perspective. And if there's an upset or a challenge going on for them, see, uh, ask yourself, are the expectations clear? Is communication open and authentic? And is, are there any external interruptions that will impact whatever you're trying to co-create with these people? Just as a, a little a thing for you to consider. Chanel, the now is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Ah, oh, one of my favorite quotes. This moment is a gift that's why it's called the present so set yourself up for success turn off all distraction and let me tell you it is a discipline it is an art you must practice it it doesn't come easy for a lot of people and great to have you here too lots of love hearts from tina so tell me is this making sense so far if you're finding you're getting distracted you're sabotaging your success don't be a victim of circumstance set yourself up by being in communication reconfirming what you need when you need it good morning emily great to have you here and um stay disciplined because this is a consistency game many people um around discipline <coughs> are not consistent conditioned they, and meaning they're not conditioned so they're reactive rather than responsive the phone will ring and they'll answer it I just you know you just got to stay focused and disciplined so that's that's one little share I had another client yesterday um, in Perth that you know Perth's a really tough market and they're a principal as well and they shared with me that they lost two deals recently uh, I think one was like 2.8 million and the other one was 4.4 million and and, and um, unfortunately my client uh, spiraled down losing the deals and got sick and then got in a funk and yeah he was in a funk yesterday and he's like I need help getting out of this funk so let me ask you first of all have you ever been in a funk have you ever not gotten a, a something that you were really working towards and you noticed you were quite attached and you've been disappointed so his uh, discipline is key yes Chanel great participation by the way you, I feel like I need prizes to throw out for you know great participation contribution to the collective um, <clears throat> so what we established was my clients focus just got on themselves rather than staying in service of the client and this is critical especially in real estate you know my clients feelings are valid because the market's tough he's he plays in the higher end of the market um, only when Prince is involved um, I'm not sure what that means is it Prince the singer? And um, so, and because he hasn't had a lot of stock sell recently, he's become transactional. So he was really attached to the outcome. The first client was a 70 year old lady who, you know, she'd been in the house for 38 years. I think she was, she was a widow and they came close to the end. And what my client did extremely well in, in both scenarios was negotiate like a really high value and got to meet the client's expectations. But this 70 year old lady pulled out overnight because she just felt like everything was moving too fast. It was too pushed. And I asked my client to reflect on his behavior to see if, there, if he was pushing. Hey, Amanda, great to have you here. And he said yes. He noticed that what happened was because he was so not desperate, but focused and intentional on getting the listing that his energy became about the listing and he lost connection with the vendor. And she's a 70 year old woman. She's a savvy woman. Uh, she's a widow and she's selling a home of 38 years. It's got all the memories and overnight she just bailed. Uh, and so he spiraled. And then I think the day after he lost a $4.4 million deal because the um, the purchaser um, lost half a million dollars in the gold crash. 
out of his control, right? But here's the deal. Stuff, shit's going to happen all the time and we have yeah. to be conditioned to stay in service of our clients because as soon as we make what happens to us mean we're not good enough or we suck or we this, like he spiraled down and got sick and nearly got pneumonia, got a virus because his frequency just dropped. We just looked at what did you learn and he said, I learned that I need to stay focused on the client. I learned that I, I can't rush them. I learned that I'm a really, really good negotiator, but I also got really attached to the outcome. And interestingly, I said to I said to my client yesterday, you know, what's your activity with the been like since? And he said, yeah, no, we're still in communication. Like you still got great rapport. Hey, Julianne. However, I said to him, you know, you need to go and take a card and some flowers to the 70 year old and let and let her know you're here to hold her hand. She also communicated that the house he was trying to sell to her and her son was keen to buy was too big for her. So he just lost connection and he knows it. Uh, so I said, get her a beautiful card and a bunch of flowers and go to the door and knock on the door and actually genuinely say, hey, Maria, okay, I hear you. You felt this is moving too fast. I want you to know that I'm here for you right by your side and I appreciate this is a highly emotional time for you. Letting go of the family home that's full of memories of nearly 40 years of you and your beautiful beloved husband that's now passed. We will move as fast or slow as you need to. I will be transparent with you and let you know when there's a great opportunity and there might be times I need to encourage you, but let's just stay in communication. And he realized he didn't do that. He just kind of, not quite on her because he hasn't but he just his focus was on himself does that make sense so if you lose a deal as an agent do you just like go in the corner and lick your wounds and your frequency drops and then you're beating yourself up and cracking the whip or do you stay curious do you ask yourself what is there to learn from this how can I stay in service how can I keep connecting and keep building rapport with these clients this is really really important uh, okay, discipline is key. Got it. Chanel saying funk. Oh, uh, what's this? Christine saying attachment is a thing too, isn't it? Especially when going um, with what is so much more peaceful, letting go. Yeah, you know, we can have intentions to fulfill, but when we're attached to an outcome, I promise you vendors feel it. You know, I was just a vendor that received crappy service by a number of agents. And I'll tell you the difference at a listing consultation between those agents that are attached to you signing the authority and those that aren't is obvious um, <clears throat> so yes thank you for your comments I really appreciate it uh, what have we got here attachment she felt uh, she felt is the key Jen Rom g'day Luke Scott here yes 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 you're right I understand the other person just feel it's hold us back as the business needs more okay I'm not sh exactly sure what that means but yes of course standing in the other person's shoes provides great clarity sinking in hey Kellyanne sinking in does that mean this is sinking in Emily's got my corporate license granted yesterday let's give it up for Emily let's give her some love I cried so much because I was so grateful and worked so hard towards it and then I I realize we are too tough on ourselves to not stop and celebrate yes honey you must stop and celebrate your wins beautiful learnings for him great that you can facilitate that thanks Christine lovely feedback connection connection Emily is saying is everything yes it is connection is everything in NLP neuro linguistic programming there's a, a whole distinction on rapport it's it's what I love right and too many real estate um, uh, too many real estate agents, particular professionals, try and ask for the business without building rapport. And let me tell you, rapport is the doorway to asking for business. You cannot ask someone for business if you're not in rapport, if you're not connected. It's premature. It's like I cannot freaking stand when I get um, notifications on LinkedIn from people it's like they don't, I don't even know them and they've sent me this long-winded thing about how I should engage them and what they can do for me and all these percentages I'm like you're just landing as transactional if you just connected and say hey Tanj look through your profile looks like you're up to great stuff a couple of compliments see we can we've shared a couple of you know we've got a couple of shared connections would love to learn more about me and what I'm up to great that's how I connect with people on LinkedIn stop selling me stuff before I even know what your name is it's just like vomit fill uh, Chanel's like, so true, Emily Morning, Morgan in real estate. Maggie's joined in, get a communications transparency equals trust critical. Dale Caligari's in the house. 
Hello, Mother from Palm Cove. I don't know why I'm getting all official, but my matriarch is online. <laughs> hey, Mum, how are you, gorgeous? I think this is the first time you may have tuned in. Emily Morgan, Energy, Vibration, Body Language and Trust. Yeah, it's about matching and mirroring. Does this make sense? Tina saying, Emily, absolutely celebrate the wins. Congratulations. Emily, you've got people. Facebook acknowledging you getting your commercial license congratulations so you're in the game of real estate most of you who are watching this it is your job to stay in service and if a deal falls through and you're in funky town get your focus off yourself ask yourself what you're learning and get back into being of service if ever I'm in funky town all I need to do all the spirits are on, says Chenille. Emily Morgan's saying, thank you. Thank you, Tina from Emily on Instagram. All I need to do is go and do a coaching session or get in conversation with somebody I love and be a contribution to others. And I'm out of funky town for sure. So when you lose a deal, when you don't get what you want, stay in service, ask what you're learning and apply the learning. Um, I think think uh, so I've got five more minutes because uh, what I will say there's also a number of agents and principals that really need assistance and when I say have you got a position description for the person you want to hire they're like no I don't know where to start and they get all overwhelmed if you're wanting an assistant and you're wondering what do I need to do with their position and how do I write it just get a massive piece of paper draw a line in the middle write all the client interfacing connection you know um, actions on your role if you're a BDM or P PM or agent or principal, what's all the things that you need to do face to face or in communication with the client? And what's all the behind the scenes, non dollar productive stuff?